So this is, I believe, part four of the integration by parts. So we've got a couple more examples, and then this should be the end of the section. Um, so here we've got example six. They want us to integrate this. It doesn't say any directions on it, but usually when they just give you the problem like that, they're going to want you to do something, and that's to simplify it. And the only way to simplify this is to actually integrate it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, Okay, so first of all, there's two terms here, which is a little bit different than what we've seen so far. It's usually just been one term, like for instance, this. It's all multiplied together, so it's just one term. But here, we've got a plus sign in between everything, so we do have two terms. So we can integrate each term individually, like this. Now, this problem here does not require um, any integration by parts, okay? So what I could do is just add one to the power, divide by the new power, and then put the plus C, but because I have a second term, I'm just gonna put one big fat plus C at the end, okay? Um, and so then I end up with here 2 thirds times x cubed plus something and then plus c. Now, here is where the problem is, okay? That's where, and for this particular problem, you can choose whether or not to use substitution or to avoid substitution simply because of the expression itself. So here's my side work here. I'll put the answer in there in a second. Um, but if you notice the expression, if I actually square this expression, I get one over 16 X squared, which can be written as one over 16 times X to the negative two. And I could apply the power rule to this, bringing this outside as a constant multiplier, and then just simply writing the um, power rule. Now I'm gonna do that here simply because that aligns with what WebAssign shows you if you view an example. However, I am also going to show you what you could have done using substitution, okay? So here we've got this, and then we've got the integral of x to the negative two dx. So I get, um, if I add one, I get negative one, and then divide by the new power. I'll bring in that plus C a little bit closer. And then here, if I simplify this, this will go this will go downstairs, and a positive times a negative will give me a negative 1 16th over X. Okay, and then again, I'll bring the plus C a little bit closer. So this is the expression that you end with, and it is formal since my X is in the denominator. However, I'm gonna center this numerator there we go okay now if I wanted to do it using substitution remember what I'm integrating 1 over 4x squared dx what I could do is rewrite that as 4x to the negative 2 dx then I could let u equal the 4x the du would equal 4 dx and since I don't have this would become u but I still have to substitute something for dx I don't have this extra 4 here in this expression so what ends up happening is is I multiply both sides of this equation by 1 fourth giving me this to substitute for dx and I bring in the 1 fourth on the outside and then the du on the inside then if I apply my power rule I will get u to the negative one over one plus c over negative one, I'm sorry. So add one to the power, divide by the new power, and then I tag on my plus c because I've applied my integration rule. And then I'm going to back sub. So this becomes negative one fourth times one over, and u is four x plus c. Well, 1 fourth and 1 over 4x become 1 over 16x. Negative 1 over 
16x, which is exactly what we have here, okay? So um, either way, whether you just manipulated the expression and found something that could be integrated without substitution, or whether you took it the way it was and you integrated it with substitution, in this particular problem, you do have a choice. Most other problems you don't, this one just worked out a little bit funny in the fact that it was simply a square, which a square can be um, manipulated rather easily, okay? Same thing if it were a cube or fourth power or anything like that, okay? So now we have example seven, the last example of this section. So here, again, you run into the part where what is the inner function and the outer function, right? What is, what am I going to let u equal? And remember the key factor was, is which one looks like it has an outer function, or you can think of it, which one has a higher degree. So if you look at this expression and you look at this exponent, this exponent has a higher degree than this expression here. So to me, that would indicate that this should be u. However, another way to confirm that thought is that if you notice, e to some power is the outer function here. So this exponent is the inner function. So that again is going to be another clue to help me identify what is u. So if I take du, that would be 3x squared plus 3, and instead of putting dx and dx, I'm just going to put a parenthesis and a dx. So this expression here will become e to the u, but I don't know what to plug in for this and this. I almost have that, but if you notice, this is a multiplier of that. If I take that and I multiply it by 3, I end up with what I have here for du. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 third. And when I do that, this one-third will have to get distributed in there, leaving me with just x squared plus 1 times dx. And now I know what to substitute for x squared plus 1 times dx. This is what gets substituted. So I could put the one-third here and the du there, or I could have put the one-third all the way on the outside, since it is just a constant multiplier. And the integral of one of... Uh, Oops, I wrote u to the u. That's not right. e to the u. Integral of e to the u is just e to the u plus c. But again, we have to back up. So what was u? u was x cubed plus 3x. And this is the formal way to write that answer. Therefore, we are done with this particular problem.